why get mining up? First of all, the main reason why most of you guys are probably going to want to get your mining up is because of quests. There are many quests in the game that require mining. Here is just a list of a few of the ones that require mining that are pretty important to get done on an account. Hero's Quest requires 50 mining, Dragon's Lair 2, 68, Song of the Elves 70, making friends with my arm 72. So mining is definitely good to get up. Another reason why you may want to get your mining level up is because of the money that you can make. Two of the methods are very good for alt accounts or if you just want to AFK, Motherload Mine and Amethyst, and they are around 300-350k GP per hour, which is pretty good for something as AFK as they are. You'll also be able to make up to 1 mil per hour from gems, up to 1.5 mil per hour from mining runite, and Zalcano can be up to 3 mil per hour. Also, you may want to level mining just simply because you like the skill or maybe because you want the mining cape. It does. It is one of the best looking capes in the game, I got to say. Uh, the max cape as well, you need 99 mining of course for the max cape. When you're doing your mining, you're going to be using a tool called a pickaxe. So here's a table of the lower level pickaxes, ranging from bronze pickaxe all the way up to the rune pickaxe. So from this table, we can see what the mining requirement is and the attack requirement is. The attack requirement is only needed if you're going to wield the pickaxe. You can use the pickaxe without wielding it. Just have it in your inventory. Here are the higher level pickaxes. So underneath dragon, we have three different dragon pickaxes shown in the dragon pickaxe the dragon pickaxe upgraded, and the dragon pickaxe ore. You can change the dragon pickaxe into the other two by using certain upgrade and ornament kits on them. All it is is cosmetic though. It doesn't change the ability or how good the pickaxe is. Then we have the third age pickaxe, which is just as good as the dragon pickaxe. Then we go to the line below that, and that is the infernal pickaxe. The infernal pickaxe is just as good as the dragon pickaxe when it comes to mining. The bonus with the infernal pickaxe is that it has a chance of turning whatever ore you're mining into nothing and gives you smithing XP. So if you're mining iron ore, you have a chance of the iron ore that you would have gotten to just disappear and then that turns into smithing XP. So the infernal pickaxe has the same requirements as the dragon pickaxe with the addition of an 85 smithing requirement. And then finally, the last row we have crystal pickaxe. This is the best pickaxe in the game for mining. It doesn't have the smithing effect that the infernal has, but it is faster at mining. It does have a cost though. It, you have to upkeep it with shards that you get from Priftinus. And because of the shard cost, in most scenarios, I would say that the crystal pickaxe is not worth it to use. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about how pickaxes work. Mining is actually different from uh, most other gathering skills. So the way the mining works, the different pickaxes actually don't increase your likelihood of mining the rock. What they do is they actually speed up the mining cycle. So here's a table with the times for each pickaxe. I couldn't find any exact information online about what each pickaxe was, so I just went and tested it myself, and this is what I found with my testing. So bronze pickaxe every 4.9 seconds is a mining cycle. That means that every 4.9 seconds you have a chance of mining the rock. Going all the way down to the best one, which is crystal. With crystal you have a chance of mining the rock every 1.65 seconds. So even if you're 99 mining, if you're using a bronze pickaxe and you go and try and mine some iron, it's going to take you at least 4.9 seconds in order to mine the iron. While this table is a bit simplified, it is a bit more complicated than uh, just these times, but we really don't need to go into that. When you average it out in the end, these are the times that you get. There are a few places where it does work differently, such as Motherload Mine or Blast Mine. Your pickaxe affects the kind of ore that you get, but in general, outside of mini games. This is how mining works. Here are a couple charts just to help you visualize kind of how much better certain pickaxes are than other pickaxes. The difference between crystal and rune is really not that big. Lower is better on these charts, of course. Now we're gonna get into some of the other equipment that you can uh, use while mining that is helpful. So first up is the Varrock plate body. You get this from doing the diaries in Varrock. So tier one is from doing easy, tier two, medium, tier three, hard, and tier four, elite. This is probably actually the best item that you can get to help you with mining outside of a pickaxe. Most methods you're going to use, this plate body will help you with. So tier 1 has a 10% chance of doubling the ore that you get all the way up to coal. So iron is a big method of mining. Uh, this tier 1 plate body will give you a chance at getting 2 iron ore while mining. Tier 2 is the same thing but up to mithril ore. Tier 3 is the same thing but up to addy ore and tier four is the same thing uh, for pretty much any, for any regular ore. The plate body typically does not affect mini games. So at places such as blast mine or motherload mine, it does not have an effect. 
Next up, we're talking about mining gloves. You get these from mining inside the mining guild. While mining inside the mining guild, you have a chance at getting minerals. You can then trade those minerals in for mining gloves. You can then upgrade the gloves to, from mining gloves into superior gloves, and then from superior gloves into expert mining gloves. What these gloves do is they have a chance when you mine a rock, the rock actually does not deplete. And the different levels of gloves affect different rocks. So the first level, just the mining gloves, those affect coal, silver, and gold. If you're mining gold and you get a gold rock inside your inventory, the gold rock that you're mining may not deplete, so you can just continue mining it. Superior mining gloves, same thing, but it affects mithril, addy, and rune rocks instead. And then expert mining gloves has the combined effects of the two previous gloves, plus it has the addition of amethyst. These gloves aren't super powerful, so I wouldn't recommend going out of your way to get them. The chances of rocks not being depleted when you mine them is pretty low. The next piece of equipment we're going to talk about is the Prospector Kit. You get this from doing Motherload Mine. It takes about 15 hours at Motherload Mine in order to get it. There are four pieces to the set, the helmet, the plate, the plate legs, and the boots. Each piece gives a, a bonus XP to mining, and when you wear the full set together, it gives you a, a set bonus. When you're wearing the full set, everything adds up to 2.5% bonus XP in mining. Next, we're going to talk about tick manipulation in mining. This is important because the fastest training method in mining, and a lot of the fastest training methods in mining, deal with tick manipulation. So what tick manipulation is, is when you start an action of some other type, and then you switch to a different action, and the action that you switch to will actually finish when the first action that you started was supposed to finish. So earlier, when I showed that bronze pickaxe has a mining cycle of every 4.9 seconds, you can override that by starting a different sort of cycle. The common things people use for this is first the Guam and then Swamp Tar with the Pestle and Mortar in your inventory. You use the Guam on the tar and this starts the cycle of creating a Guam Tar. Creating a Guam Tar is three ticks. The other thing people do is they use Kebit Feet on Van Braces. This will create spiky Van Braces. Once again, this is a three tick action. So if you were to use your Kebit feed on some van braces, start a three tick action to create spiky van braces, but then you click on a rock before you finish that action, the mining of that rock will actually finish when your spiky van braces were supposed to be finished. Quests. So there are quite a few quests in the game that give you mining XP. This is a table of all the quests in the game that give you mining XP. Along with the XP in the quest, it shows you the requirement for the quest. Absolutely in the beginning, when you're level 1 mining, the best way to get your mining up is to do quests. Here I've marked in green the best quests to do for mining XP, especially when you're level 1 and you're just starting out. The ones marked in yellow are good. They're not as good as the ones in the green because they have more requirements, but they are still good to do. Starting off the leveling, we have the efficient route. So we're at one mining right now. The efficient route is to quest the beginning of your experience. Here are the quests that you should do to get your mining up in the beginning. Dorix quest will get you from 1 to 10 mining, Plague City 10 to 18, the dig site 18 to 33, the Lost Tribe 33 to 34, another slice of ham 34 to 36, Anakra's Lament 36 to 38, and in total all of these quests should take about one hour if you're doing them quickly. If it's your first time doing the quests and you have to watch a guide over and over to complete them, it will take longer, but it can easily be done in one hour. After we finish those quests, we're going to go ahead and do 38 to 45 mining with power mining iron ore. The XP rates are around 45 to 60k XP per hour. You can three tick it. If you're not doing three tick, you want to be at a three iron rock spot as shown in the video right here. This method is very simple. Look at how I'm doing it. You want to make sure that really the only thing you need to keep in mind is you need to drop your ore between mining the rocks. You can click on the iron and then it will start the mining cycle and then you can drop ore and as long as you click back on the rock before the mining cycle is over, it won't reset it.
For three tick iron, you just want a lot of iron rocks together close by where you don't have to move very much. So this spot is just east of Ardi, and this is where I typically do three tick iron. This is the hardest and most click intensive uh, mining activity. So most people will probably just want to skip three ticking iron. Next, we're gonna go over a second option to get up to 45 mining if you don't wanna do quests. So starting out at level one mining, you're gonna to wanna to mine tin or copper. Preferably, you'd want a spot with tin or copper where there's at least two rocks right next to each other. So there's a little corner that you can stand in and mine both of the rocks without moving as you guys can see in this clip. The XP rates for copper and tin is around five to 10K XP per hour. So getting from one to 15 mining will take about 20 minutes. Three tick is possible with tin and copper and it's done the same way as I've previously shown. So if that's something you wanna do, it's definitely possible. Once you hit 15 mining, you wanna switch over to mining iron ore. So as I just previously explained for iron ore, it's the same thing. You wanna find a three rock spot. The spot that's in the video, I am at Al Karid. You mine the three rocks without moving and you wanna drop your ore between mining the rocks. The XP is gonna range from 20 to 60K as you level up higher, as well as whether you picked a three tick or not. Getting 15 to 45 mining should take about two hours, which means in total, this second option is gonna be about two hours and 20 minutes to get from one mining to 45 mining. Whereas the first option, the efficient route, is gonna be more about one hour and 30 minutes to one hour and 40 minutes. And now time for 45 to 99 mining. I'm gonna start out with the efficient route and go over that plan. And after the efficient route, I'm gonna talk about all the alternative methods that you can train your mining and what is good about each one. And then you can sub in whichever method you want for the levels that you want if you don't wanna follow the efficient plan. The method that we'll be using from 45 all the way to 99 mining is three tick for granite, also known as three T four G. So for this method that you're gonna be using all the way from 41 mining until 99 mining, there are a bunch of items that can be useful. So I'm gonna go over all those items. You of course don't need all of these. Each one of these items has their place. I'm gonna go over the best gear first and then like downgrading gear as I go. So first of all, uh, the best gear, um, full prospector with a Varrock plate body of at least tier two or better with a desert amulet four, a max cape and infernal pickaxe. With this setup, this amulet, Desert Amulet number four, it gives you complete protection from the desert heat. So you take no damage, that is very big. The Prospector and the Varrock Plate Body four give XP bonus. Only the tier four armor for the Plate Body gives an XP bonus, but you still wanna use the Varrock Plate Body if you only have tier two, because tier two all the way up to tier four also gives you a 10% chance at getting double ore when mining granite. The Infernal Pickaxe, because it burns up the granite into smithing XP. So it makes it easier, you have to click less with this because you don't have to drop as much and you get smithing XP while doing this. The max cape also gives you a chance at getting extra ore. Now, if you don't have a rock plate body two or better, then you can swap out for a prospector jacket. That would be the next best option for the XP bonus. Also the prospector acts as a desert gear. So if you don't have an Desert Amulet 4, so let's say we don't have a Desert, desert Amulet 4, uh, you can wear any other amulet, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna be getting hit by the heat, so you want some heat protection. So Prospector acts as a protection against the heat. Also, if you don't have the Desert Amulet 4, it would be good to have an HP cape plus a regen. What this does is it allows you to pretty much not need any food or water skin still, because this is gonna give you enough healing just passively to counteract the desert heat if it doesn't counteract the desert heat completely you still won't have to bank for probably at least like two or three hours with no food and no water skins if you don't have an hp cape or you can't afford a regen bracelet so that you will be taking damage and you're not going to be restoring hp very quickly uh, it would be best to bring water skins along with a along with a room pouch if you have a room pouch um, if you don't have a room pouch then this then these runes will just take up inventory space um, but you want to bring these runes, uh, fire, water, astral, or you can also bring a steam battle staff to, uh, to pay for the fire and water. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to be casting uh, humidify. And what that will do is that will fill up your water skin. That way you never have to bank for water skins. Not only that, but with this, you can also cast magic imbue while you're mining if you just want some uh, free bonus magic XP. 
If you don't have Lunar Spells because you're one defense or you just don't have high enough magic level to cast Humidify, then you're going to want to fill up your inventory with a good 12 or so water skins at least. And then you're just going to have to bank every so often and grab more water skin. But to allow you to last longer, you want desert protection. So once again, the prospector set will protect you from the desert a little bit. If you don't have prospector, you want to bring a desert shirt, desert boots, desert robe, and a menophyte purple hat. All of this stuff is tradable and can be bought for pretty cheap. And what this set actually does, this and the prospector, it doesn't reduce the damage of the heat, but it extends how long it takes between each time the heat hits you. So when you have four pieces like this, it takes 132 seconds between every time the desert heat hits you. Then just some fast ways to get here. If you have to bank for water skins or you're just doing farming runs or other stuff and you leave this place and you wanna get back quick, uh, a few of the fast methods are this camulet. You get the camulet from doing Anakura's Lament, which was one of the quests I recommended doing earlier. It's not a very hard quest. In fact, it's extremely quick. It does have some medium requirements, but other than that, it's a very easy quest. And what this amulet will do, when you first unlock it, you can only teleport to the temple. So Climb up this ladder and you are essentially at the, uh, the mining site, the quarry. If you've completed the hard diary for the desert, you will unlock the teleport surface and then that teleports you straight to the surface right here. So basically right to the mine. Another fast way to get here is by using a Pharaoh's Scepter. So the third option, Jaldracht, that will teleport you to this pyramid. This does require the completion of desert treasure. And so from this pyramid, the quarry is just right over here. And finally, probably the most essential thing for this method, other than the pickaxe, is having a three tick method, uh, preferably some herbs, some swamp tar, and a pestle mortar. So I have guam and a taromint. So to make the guam tar requires 19 herb lore and 39 herb lore for the taromint tar. You can replace this taromint with a marental, which requires 31 herb lore. The reason why you want two different herbs, if possible, is because of the space for the clicks. When you're in this position, uh, clicking like this, it is a shorter distance to this rock than if you're clicking from this one. And then you wanna use this one when you're mining these ones right here. Also, preferably, you'd want your screen to be a bit smaller than I have mine right now. There we go, I've switched my screen. I've uh, It's still resizable, but I have shrunk it. So now my inventory is right next to the rock. So this makes a very small distance from clicking on the herbs to clicking on the rock and then also there is one last thing the herb sack if you have one of these this is helpful because if you mess up and you use up one of your herbs you can actually bring some extra with you make sure they are grimy so you can bring a bunch of extra grimy uh, clean one of them and then use the rest back on the herb sack and there you go you can keep going so for this method, it's just doing the same cycle over and over and over. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through one cycle, starting up at the top rock, or I guess the the southernmost rock, if you were to look at my compass. So you're gonna mine that. After it has been mined, you're gonna use your swamp tar on your guam, and then click on the middle rock. Your timing has to be correct for this to work properly. And you'll know your timing is correct if your character starts moving at the same time as it starts doing the guam tar animation. If your character just stands there and starts doing the animation and then moves after the animation starts, uh, your timing is off. In order for the timing to be lined up correctly, you want to click on the rock as soon as possible after clicking on your tar on your guam. And just trial and error, after you do it for a while, you should start to pick up the timing on this. After you've mined the middle rock, once again, you're gonna click on your swamp tar, click on your guam, and then click on the third rock in that line. Once that one has been mined, you're gonna click on your tar, click on your guam again, and then click on the rock that is to the left, or if you were to look at the compass, the rock that is to the east. From there, you want to once again, click on your swamp tar, click on your teramin this time, and then click on the top rock where we started, 
or if you were to look at the compass, this would be the rock that is the furthest to the south. And that is one full cycle. So you just repeat that over and over, and then you're gonna have to add in dropping the granite between mining the rocks. So it is pretty click intensive, but it isn't too hard after you practice it for a while. You will want to move to the next rock every three ticks. So zero time is when you first use your tar on your herb. Then you click on the rock, and once three ticks have passed since the very start, so since the zero time where you very first used your tar on your herb, you want to once again use your tar on your herb, and that will reset the time back to zero. Click on the next rock. Once three ticks have passed, you just repeat that over and over. You're going to be moving every three ticks. One tick is 0.6 seconds, so you're going to be moving every 1.8 seconds. Now it's time for the alternative methods. These methods are good. They're not as fast as the efficient route, of course, but each of these methods has its own benefit. And many people do many of these methods. So if you don't feel like doing three tick for granite, that is perfectly fine. So the first alternative method we're gonna talk about is the mining guild iron. We've already talked about just doing iron at a three rock spot or three tick iron. So the final iron method is doing iron at the mining guild. The reason why the mining guild is even better for iron than the previous two methods is because inside the mining guild there is a special effect where ores or rocks they respawn twice as fast there is another effect as well and that is that you get a plus seven invisible mining boost while inside the mining guild that isn't going to affect the iron though so we can just ignore that for now the reason that doesn't affect iron is because once you're already in the mining guild you should already be at the point where you should have 100 percent success on getting iron on the first mining cycle and you can't get any better than that so the extra levels really don't do anything to get into the mining guild, you need 60 mining. That can be boosted though. With a spicy stew, it can, you can get in with as low as 55 mining. If you can wield the dragon pickaxe, you can get in with 57 mining. And then finally, you can drink a dwarven stout M, which will allow you in with 58 mining if you don't have access to the previous two. The XP rate is 60 to 70k an hour if you're banking. If you're power mining and dropping the ore, it's 70 to 80k per hour. The profit, if you're banking, is about 75k per hour. And if you're dropping, of course, the profit is zero. Three tick has no use here. And in fact, three tick will make it worse if you're using a dragon pickaxe or better. For the gear, just bring prospector and a rock plate body. The rock plate body is better than the prospector, no matter what tier you have it. Even if you only have tier one rock plate body, that is the best plate body to bring. And then of course, bring the best pickaxe that you can up to the infernal. In this clip, I am using a crystal pickaxe. I would not recommend doing that unless you have a lot of extra crystal shards and you really don't care about using them. The next method we're going to talk about is the volcanic mine. This is located over on Fossil Island. And the good things about this method is it is pretty good XP. Not as good as three tick granite, but it is, but it is one of the fastest methods outside of that. You don't make any money and it is quite a bit more AFK than three tick granite. It's not as AFK as motherload mine. So the person who would want to do volcanic mine for the mining XP is someone who will be paying attention a little bit, but does want to AFK a little bit at the same time and doesn't care to make money from mining. The downside of volcanic mine is you do need a team to get the best XP rates. The requirements to do volcanic mining is 50 mining, 150 museum kudos, and have finished the bone voyage quest. It is recommended to have 85 plus mining, uh, 40 plus prayer, 70 plus HP, dragon pickaxe, full prospector, high healing food, high prayer bonus, and prayer potions. The XP rates range from 50 to 95k an hour, depending on your mining level, whether you're with a team or not, whether you are super AFKing or only sort of AFKing. You can't use uh, three tick methods here, and the profit will be uh, nothing because you're going to be using supplies up, so any money that you do get from it will probably be spent uh, just breaking even with the supply cost. Next up, we have Blast Mine, which is a mining activity found on Zaya in the Lova Kang area. Blast mine is fairly click intensive, definitely not as bad as three tick granite or even iron, but it is not something that you can AFK. It does provide pretty good XP rates though, coming in at 75K XP per hour at the upper end, as well as about 700K profit per hour at the upper end. So the person that would wanna do blast mine for their mining XP would be someone who doesn't wanna click a ton, but is gonna still pay attention to the mining and is okay with medium XP rates and wants to make a bit of money from mining as well. The requirements to do blast mine are 43 mining, 100% low king favor, 
dynamite, chisel, and a tinderbox. It's recommended to have 75 plus mining though. The XP rates are 30 to 75k XP per hour. The profit is 10k to 700k GP per hour. That is a very wide spread of GP. Most of the money that you're going to be making from this comes from Runite Ore, so uh, you won't be making much money until you hit Runite. But the thing with the Blast Mine is you can actually get ores that are 10 levels above your own. So Runite Ore requires 85 mining. At the Blast Mine, you can actually get Runite Ore at 75 mining. That is why it is the recommended level to get before doing this. As far as how you do this is very simple. You're going to blast six spots on the wall and then you're gonna bank the ore and then you're just gonna repeat that over and over in the same spots. In this picture, we have the spots listed. So you're just gonna go in order from one all the way to seven. So you wanna carve out one and two, place your dynamite in both of them before you light it. Then you light both of them at the same time and then you run over to number three and then in, at number three, you carve it out, you put your dynamite in it and you light your dynamite. Then you run over to number four, do the same thing run to number five, do the same thing, run to number six, do the same thing. And then finally, number seven is the deposit sack. So once you're done mining and you want to leave the place, then you want to go and collect your ores. There's a dwarf that you click collect on, and that is where you're going to get your big XP drop is when you collect your ores. The next method we're going to talk about is motherload mine. What you do at the motherload mine is you mine the minerals off the wall. Then you take those over to a sack. You put them in the sack. There's a water wheel and it pushes water and it pushes your stuff that you put into the sack down to the end where it gets cleaned. And then you go and take your ores out of the sack after they've been cleaned. That's really all there is to it. Sometimes the water wheels break. You can grab a hammer out of the crates uh, around the water wheel. And then you go back, you just click on the water wheel and it will repair it. There's a bank right next to where you grab the ore. So you just bank the ore that you get and then go back to mining. You don't want to collect your ore every time you deposit though. You want to wait until the sack is full. Only 30 mining is required to do the mother load mine. Although both the profit and the XP are pretty bad at level 30 mining. The XP rates range from 20k XP per hour all the way up to 60k XP per hour. 60k XP per hour requires 99 mining, all of the unlocks, all of the best gear, and you have to be paying attention fairly well. So I would not expect anything near 60k XP per hour if you're doing mother load mine. If you're in the typical level range of level 50 mining up to like level 80 mining, I'd say you should be expecting more around 30k XP per hour up to maybe 40k XP per hour. As far as the profit that you're gonna be getting from the motherload mine, it's gonna range from 30k per hour up to 300k per hour. This is gonna change with your mining level, the stuff that you have unlocked, uh, your gear, your pickaxe. There's a giant jump when you hit 85 mining because that's when you unlock Runite Ore. If you're not 85 mining, the best you can expect is probably about 100k per hour. So the main type of person that would want to do motherload mine is the type of person who wants to AFK their mining. They don't mind getting lower XP rates if it's AFK. And on the side, they're going to make a little bit of money at the same time. You cannot three tick in the motherload mine. The gear that you want is full prospector, the best pickaxe you can use up to the infernal pickaxe, or a crystal pickaxe if you have a bunch of extra shards. And a coal bag can be helpful. Just a few tips to make the mother load mine better. You want to unlock the upper floor as soon as possible. It requires 72 mining, so there's no reason to unlock it before you have 72 mining, but as soon as you have 72 mining, you want to have it unlocked. The difference between the lower floor and the upper floor is the upper floor, the mining spots actually deplete based on time rather than how many times you've gotten an ore from it. The minimum is 15 seconds. So if you click on a mining spot that no one else has clicked on yet, it will minimum stay for at least 15 seconds and will typically actually stay longer than that. On the bottom floor, the mining spots are depleted by when you mine an ore. There's a one in three chance of it being depleted every time you mine one ore on the lower floor, which is a whole lot worse for AFKing. You want to unlock the upgraded sack for 200 nuggets as soon as possible. This isn't as good as unlocking the upper floor, but if you're not 72 mining and you're not even close and you have 200 nuggets, then this is a good spot to put your nuggets. What this does is it increases the amount that the sack can hold. Originally, the sack can only hold 80 of the pay dirt. After the upgrade, it can hold 161. Another thing is you want to be using your dragon pickaxe special as often as you can. Another thing is the medium Falador diary unlocks a shortcut. Uh, that shortcut takes you to a spot that's typically not as busy, but that spot is on the lower floor. So that's only good if you are using the lower floor. It requires 54 agility as well. 
Another tip is the Elite Falador Diary will slightly improve the ores that you get. And then finally, you want to deposit your ores intelligently. So you want to deposit them right up to that cap, and then you can do one full inventory after that. It only stops you from depositing after you've gone past the limit. So if you have 60 in the sack and then you deposit 27, that's going to put you at 87, which is beyond the limit. So you can't put any more past that. But on the other hand, if you have 80 in there, you can still put in another inventory because you're not past the limit yet. Another AFK mining method is Amethyst Mining. Amethyst is located in the Mining Guild, just a little south of the bank. Amethyst is an extremely AFK method with low XP rates and a little bit of profit on the side. So the person that would want to do Amethyst Mining is someone who uh, wants to extremely AFK their mining while making a little bit of money and they don't mind that mining is going to take them uh, a long time with this method. Another thing about Amethyst is it has a pretty good rate for the pet. So if you're pet hunting, this is a good AFK method to obtain a pet as well. The requirements for Amethyst mining is 92 mining. The XP rate is 25k XP per hour. And the profit is about 350k GP per hour. 3 stick is pretty much useless here. And the recommended gear is a crystal pickaxe, a rock plate body 4, expert mining gloves, and prospector. There really aren't any tactics or anything here. You just come to the spot, click on the wall to mine the amethyst, uh, wait until you mine it, and then move to the next spot. There's a bank just slightly north of here. You just bank the ores when you're done and then run back. That is all there is to it. Next, we're gonna move on to the mining methods where you make money as the primary focus. And the first of those methods will be runite mining. Runite mining can be fairly AFK, it's going to be extremely low XP per hour, but you're going to make quite a bit of money. So if you're someone who wants to make money from mining, but you don't want to do anything super click intensive and you don't really care too much about the XP rates, then you are someone who will probably want to do runite mining. The requirements are 85 mining. The XP rates are 13 to 18 K XP per hour. The profit is one to 1.5 mil GP per hour. In this clip, I am using three tick, but it has very little uses. It saves you like one tick while you're running, but other than that, it really doesn't help you too much. The recommended gear for mining runite is a crystal pickaxe, a rock plate body four, superior or expert mining gloves, and prospector. Runite rocks respawn every 12 minutes. If you're at the mining guild, then it is every six minutes. So if you're using this method, you probably wanna have some timers up so that you know when to hop to certain worlds to get the rocks as soon as they spawn. But other than that, there really isn't too many tips or tactics I can give you for mining runite. Here is a table of all the different locations where you can mine uh, runite. I would say the places that have the highest requirements are probably gonna be the best places to go if you can access those areas. In this clip, I'm mining in the Prif uh, mining area. There's four runite rocks there, and it wasn't too hard to find worlds that had rocks available. Gem mining will be the next uh, mining method that we talk about. So once again, another method that I would say is primarily for money or to get the pet. This is the best way, the most efficient way to get the mining pet. The requirements are Shiloh Village and 40 Mining. This method provides very high XP at the higher levels if you use 3 tick, and you make a fair amount of GP at the same time, but it is very click intensive. So the type of person that I would say that would want to use this method is either someone that is pet hunting or someone who is fine with very click intensive stuff, but would rather do this and get a little bit less XP, but more money over something like 3 tick granite where you're going to get a bit more XP, but you're not going to make any money. The XP rates range from 40k per hour to 90k XP per hour. Profit is 500k to 1.1 mil per hour, depending on your mining level, whether you're using a glory or not, and whether you're using 3 tick or not. Some tips uh, for gem mining. First, you absolutely want to wear a charged amulet of glory. That increases your chance of mining the gems. The Karamja Hard Diary unlocks a much better place to mine the gems than the than the area that is above ground. And three tick is extremely useful here. Just like with granite, if you are gonna be using this method, I would highly advise to use three tick. So the method I'd recommend down in the dungeon to mine as much as possible. Going from the deposit chest, pretty much you just go almost straight up and then you just loop around to the west until you get back to the chest. You deposit your gems 
and then you just repeat as I'm showing in this clip. Next up is Zalcano. This is located in Privdinus, and it is a skilling boss. This method is going to be low XP per hour, but very high GP per hour. It is also not AFK. You have to pay attention pretty much every second, but it isn't super click intensive. The requirement is Song of the Elves. The XP rates are going to range from 15 to 20k XP per hour. The profit is going to range from 1.8 mil to 3 mil per hour. 3 tick is possible here, but it is not helpful. The person who's going to be using this method is someone who wants to make money. So if you don't have access to Chambers of Zarek or Theater of Blood, then this is actually one of the best methods that you can pick for making money. The gear that you want to take, uh, defense bonus doesn't help here, so you want some weight reducing stuff because you will be doing a lot of running, so graceful is good. If you have a rock plate body 3 or better, that actually helps you mine an extra tephra sometimes, so wear that. I would say bring your best pickaxe, crystal pickaxe is good here. A regen bracelet would also be helpful, phoenix necklace would be helpful. Then as far as the inventory setup, you want to bring stamina potions for all the running that you're going to be doing. You want to bring some sort of healing, so most people bring Ceridome and Bruise. If you have all that, then you are set. Zalcano is a pretty simple boss. When you start out, you're going to go to the glowing rock formation. You're going to mine Tephra from that rock. As far as how I marked the glowing rocks, how you mark stuff is if you're using the Runelite client, you go to the configurations, type in mark, Make sure your object markers are turned on. Then you can shift click. When you click on stuff, you have an option to, uh, when you shift right click, you have an option to mark object. Every time each or each corner, whenever it is glowing, you want to mark it. So if this one is glowing, you shift right click, mark object. And you wanna do that for each corner when each one is glowing. So don't do it when they're not glowing, only when they're glowing, then you wanna mark them. As far as how many Tefra you want to mine, it depends on your team size. If you are in the optimal team size of four, then you probably want to mine four to eight Tefra. Then you run to the east side of the room, you refine your Tefra, then you run to the west side of the room and you imbue your Tefra. Then you want to wait for Zalcano to make like little portals appear on the ground. There's red ones and then there's blue ones. Once those pop up, you want to stand on the blue portals and then throw your imbued Tephra at Zalcano. What those blue portals do is they increase your damage that your imbued Tephra does. If you don't wait for the portals, your Tephra is going to do less damage and you have a higher chance of having to go back and mine more Tephra in order to take down Zalcano's shield. If you're in World 2 or you're at like a mass where there's just tons of people, in that case then you don't have to wait for the portals. After you've thrown the Tephra and the shield is down, you want to go and attack Zalcano, and you do that by mining Zalcano. There is a time limit, but there's also an HP limit. So whichever one comes first, after you hit that point, then she'll stand back up and her, her shield will be renewed. And then you just have to repeat that cycle over and over. Once Zalcano is dead, everyone in the room that has done at least a certain amount of damage will get a drop. The person who did the most damage will get an extra drop. The extra drop is usually pretty small though, it's just a little tiny bonus. The mechanics to watch out for while killing Zalcano, the portals, the red portals will damage you when you walk on them, so you want to avoid those. Also, when you're mining Tephra from the rocks in the corners, she has a chance of shooting a fireball, which will blow up the rock. You don't want to be near the rock when she fires that. And then the third main mechanic that you want to watch out for is sometimes she will summon a little golem. If that golem reaches her, it will heal her. So you want to take out the golem with Tephra before it reaches her. The ideal team size for money and XP is four people. So if you have some friends, a team of four, that is the best option to do it. If you don't have a team and you don't know anyone who wants to kill Zalcano, you can go to World 2. And that's usually kind of like the mass world where anyone who doesn't have a team goes. There's usually like six or more people in World 2. So as far as money and XP, you won't be getting the ideal rates but you'll be getting pretty close. The XP and the GP per hour isn't much worse than World 2. The drops are based on how much damage you've done, so that's why World 2 is worse for drops because you don't get to do as much damage because there's more people there taking more of the share of the damage. So now I have just a few charts that I want to take a look at, comparing all the different methods together. 
Hopefully this is some additional help to help you decide which method that you wanna use. So first up, time from 85 to 99 in hours. The lower, the better. So we can see three tick, four granite is the lowest, so it is the fastest method. We already know this, but this kind of gives you a visual idea of just how much faster it is than some other methods. So Runite is the slowest, followed by Zalcano. Next up, we have the profit graph. So this is from 85 to 99, several methods with no profit. And we can see the Runite and Zalcano completely outclass every other method when it comes to profit. So pretty much every method is around 100 mil from 85 to 99, except for Runite and Zalcano. So that's what all the little bars are. They're about 100 mil. Zalcano is about 1.5 bill and Runite is about 850 mil. So now we have some graphs of efficiency or EHP. This does not relate to Crystal Math Labs. These EHP charts have two parameters and that is mining XP and GP, and that is it. So these kind of relate to people who just want mining XP and GP. They're not worried about EHP as far as maxing and 200 mil and all that sort of stuff that Crystal Math Labs EHP is calculated on. So the first EHP graph is 130K mining XP per hour is the efficient mining XP per hour and 500K GP is the efficient GP per hour. So in that case, Zalcano is the winner. Clearly, I mean, it is three mil per hour. So if your best money maker outside of mining is only 500K per hour, then obviously Zalcano is gonna be the most efficient thing to do. And the next graph, once again, the same efficient mining XP per hour, but now your efficient money is 3,545k GP per hour. So that's probably about what you can make at Vorkath. So if you can kill Vorkath and you have max gear and all that sort of stuff, then this chart applies to you. It's at this point where 3 tick 4 granite becomes equal to Zalcano and 3 tick gems. And then one final chart, if you can make 7 mil per hour. 3 tick 4 granite is clearly the best method when you can make this much money. As far as Crystal Math Labs EHP for mining, uh, that is three tick for granite because money is pretty much assumed as zero time since you use alts for money on Crystal Math Labs. That is it for the mining guide. You guys should be experts at mining now. Hopefully this was extremely helpful. Good luck to everyone on their mining journey. If this guide helped you out at all, please like the video, comment, subscribe. That helps me out a lot. See you guys next time.